Hi, my name is Gary Purchase, and this is my video review of the memoirs of Manuel Noriega, entitled American's Prisoner, written by Noriega and Peter Eisner. This is the book. Wonder in its beauty. But no, I was, I was hoping it would, you know, be bound in fine leather and smell of rich mahogany, but I paid a penny for it, so yeah, totally the, not what happened. Alright, uh, just a brief overview of Manuel Noriega was the military president of Panama in the late 80s. Um, we invaded Panama in an operation called, called Just Cause in December 20th of 1989, which ended up ended in Manuel Noriega's capture and being considered a political prisoner of the United States. So background on Noriega. Noriega was born on February 11th, 1934 in Panama, which is right here which you can see that Panama is the isthmus of the Central American Peninsula. So right here above Colombia, where we get our coffee and cocaine. Noriega later went to school, to a military school, for high school in Chile, where his brother was working for the Panamanian government as an attache there. When Noriega returned to the Chile, into Panama, and when, by the time he was 19, he got a job working for the Geological Survey. At this point, he, his life was very rosy. He was thinking very little of any kind of political or military life. Well, that changed on one holiday. He ran into Omar Torrios, which, who would soon become the president of Panama, but at that point was the station chief for the Na Panamanian National Guard. Well. Noriega, being from a political background, immediately got drafted into the service by, by Omar as soon as, he, as soon as they met, and that really set Noriega's life in the direction that we now know it. Um, that's, that's pretty much most of the background that you need to know with Noriega. Um, the review of the book, it, it was painfully biased. I don't think I've ever read something that was so one-sided and full of hate. Um, obviously, since Noriega is being held as a, as a prisoner of war, obviously not going to be too happy with the United States. But the entire book was written as Panama being the most picturesque, Pandora-like place that you could possibly go to. Literally, the entire first chapter where he's retelling the day, December 20th, 1989, when the U.S. invaded. It was like the scene in Team America where Gary was talking to the terrorists about how wonderful his village was and how peaceful and there's people partying and gaily dancing and then the Blackhawks came and killed everyone. That's pretty much how this read. Um, it was Christmas time and a direct quote from the book was that that uh, Noriega said that Panama was basically one giant party country. So, Panama was a frat house. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the Americans invade. And he goes on this desperate struggle for survival. Which basically entails jumping in a car, driving across town, and holding up in a Swiss embassy for 43 days, if I remember correctly. So desperate. I feel it. I feel it, Manuel. Hmm, right there. Alright, taking looking at this book as a piece of historiography, um, it does raise a lot of very interesting ideas. Um, while a lot of what Manuel Noriega says in the book is sometimes unfounded or at least can't be proven, um, he deals with a lot of ideas that were going around in Central America right now with American imperialism. All the way back to when they were founded as a Spanish colony, there had always been someone ruling and taking over Central America, whether it was the Spanish, um, and then now with the Americans, where their autonomy, the entire economy was based on what Panama could produce to send to American markets, and that was usually always owned by American companies. Uh, the biggest one in, in his case that he talks about is, is the United Fruit Company, otherwise known as Chiquita Bananas, um, where they own so much of the country, 
most of the people that worked for them made zero to very little amount of money. It was, it was almost pathetic, the amount of money that these people were making. So Noriega deals with the discussion of having to deal with this fact that America was an imperial force in their country. The second big um, thing that Noriega deals with is this whole concept of the Americans' policy of containing communism. Um, in the Kennedy administration, they, he started something called the Alliance for Progress. Um, this basically dealt with the fact that while land reform and other social conventions were needed to be reformed, it really basically said, hey, we'll help you out, we'll, we'll help your health care systems and give you a better quality of life, as long as you're not communist. And Noriega and Panama really benefited from this. Um, while Noriega is not, by far, not a saint at all, he definitely played himself in a very good political position for the fact that he wasn't communist. And so he became a buffer for talks between the U.S. and Cuba with Castro. And that's what makes him really interesting, is while he claims to be a contact for the CIA, he never worked for the CIA. Really what he was was a friendly country that benefited from the United States that could talk directly to Cuba. Uh, another interesting person that Manuel Noriega talked to was Gaddafi. Um, the quote that in the book that he has with Gaddafi is right after the Lockerbie bombings when Reagan bombed his family, which was, although not politically good, very, very amusing for me as an American. Um, in which Gaddafi has this look of, oh my gosh, how dare they attack my family. Um, so Noriega takes that little bit of information and he's using that to say that America did the same thing to him in Panama. Which, yeah, didn't bomb his family. Just got to say that. Um, but all of this histor historiography speaking, it's just a very interesting read. Because while he himself may be full of malarkey, the, the ideas, the thought of, of the people, of the Panamanian people that come out of this is very good. Um, so to sum up my review, you know, not the best piece of history ever. Manuel Noriega is definitely probably the worst loser I've ever seen or read of. Um, he was guilty of what he did. While he was playing off of the strengths of the time, definitely not a saint. If you get this book, I hope you pay the one cent that I got for it. Thank you for watching. Peace.